conflict in Syria was the most difficult issue of all. After two days of talks, leaders at the G8 summit have released their final communique about ending the conflict in Syria. They found some common ground, but Russia remains firm in its support of the Assad regime. NATO officials have handed over full control of Afghanistan to local forces. We will continue to help Afghan troops in operations if needed, but we will no longer plan, execute or lead these operations. The transition comes on the same day the United States agreed to hold direct peace negotiations with the Taliban. Those talks are set to take place at the Afghan Taliban's first overseas office. It opened today in the Qatari capital, Doha. The U.S. government is defending its surveillance of phone and internet data. At a hearing in Washington, the director of the National Security Agency says the program, known as PRISM, helped foil more than 50 potential terrorist plots. He also took aim at whistleblower Edward Snowden, saying his disclosure of the program has caused irreversible damage and has helped America's enemies. Brazil is cleaning up after some of the country's largest protests in two decades. More than 200,000 people took to city streets overnight, angry about poor public services, police violence and government corruption. Many Brazilians see sporting events like the Confederations Cup and next year's World Cup as an economic drain. Extreme flooding in northern India has killed dozens of people and stranded tens of thousands more. Landslides triggered by torrential rains swept away several buildings, roads and bridges. The monsoon season got off to an early start this year and caught many people off guard. And a large sculpture by Chinese artist and dissident Ai Weiwei has gone on display in Toronto. The installation outside City Hall depicts the 12 animals that represent the traditional Chinese zodiac. Ai Weiwei lives in Beijing and has not been allowed to travel outside of China since his arrest in 2011.